What a place I've come to tonight. Check this place out. So you join me in probably one of my favourite locations in the Lake District to come and photograph. It's probably in my top three, I would say. Uh, very fortunate to have this area close by to me. It's only about 25 minute drive. Uh, this is the Hard Knot Fell area of Upper Eskdale. Uh, Hard Knot Fell just sits above the Hard Knot and Rhinos Pass. And the view behind me that I've come to photograph tonight is the view across to the Score Fell range. Now, if you're a landscape photographer and you've photographed in the Lake District before, you'll probably be much more familiar with the view to Scorfell Pike uh, from Waswater. Uh, but the view from the Eskdale side of the valley, I would argue, is, is probably a better view, to be honest. But because it's a little bit out in the sticks, uh, it doesn't get an awful lot of traffic, which is great for me, not a problem. I can come up here all the time and hardly ever see a photographer, which is absolutely great. It is a location, however, that's uh, both delighted me and frustrated me probably in equal measure. I came up here for the first time probably about four years ago and I've been chasing better images uh, than that evening ever since and I've, I've not managed it. Uh, beginner's luck or whatever you want to call it, but the night I came up here, uh, we had all four seasons in about half an hour. It was light and... Uh, snow showers and rainbows and just one of those amazing evenings and it just happened to be the first time I came up here. Uh, so I was running around uh, like a headless chicken a little bit trying to get loads and loads of shots but I, I managed fortunately to come away with a, an image that forms part, part of my portfolio and probably one of the best images I've taken I would say is a big panoramic of the Scorfell range with uh, the Eskdale needle in the foreground. I shot this image actually on probably one of the <laughs> worst lenses you can imagine. Uh, it's a, a Tamron 28 to 300 super zoom. So you can imagine how soft that lens is. Um, but when I came up here that night, I just wanted to sort of pack light and keep the weight of the bag down. So I just brought that one lens to do everything. And uh, you know, like they always say with the best camera is the one that you have on you. And it's it, the same with the lenses, I mean, that image goes to show that you know you really don't always need the absolutely amazingly crystal sharp lenses to get great images i mean that image is as i said to what to this day probably one of the best images i've taken and i'm as i say back up here tonight trying to trying to beat that i don't think i'm going to get that tonight behind me as you can see uh, the clouds are just kissing the tops of the mountains so i'm hoping that they'll clear a little bit uh, later on i've got about a couple of hours till sunset so i'm going to have a little look about for uh, a few different compositions but the main one i have in mind is a big panoramic just like that one i showed you of the score fells with the Eskdale needle in the foreground well we knew that was going to happen didn't we <laughs> as soon as i got set up doing one of those nice little pieces to camera with the the posh a 6400 for the for the better quality video it all starts kicking off behind me i don't know if you can pick this up just a sec uh it's suddenly as as is customary in the lake district the weather has suddenly changed quite rapidly so i'm going to get set up here and make sure that i'm in position because i nearly missed a shot there i dumped the stuff i uh, got the long lens out and fired off a couple of handheld shots actually even got a rainbow there so i'll put those up on the screen and let me know what you think so i very nearly got caught out here by this passing squall that was going off behind me i was too busy faffing around doing a piece of camera there uh, quickly dropped the bag and got the telephoto lens out i didn't have time to set the tripod up it was really just a case of whacking the iso up and, and just trying to get what i could really I scurried down the hill as quickly as I could to try and get the shot of the needle there and 
fortunately I managed to just time it right so I caught the rainbow and also some of that lovely backlit uh, hail that was passing over there it was uh, really a, a, quite a sight to see that and totally caught me off guard to be honest because it, this sort of weather really wasn't forecast but uh, yeah a nice way to start the evening oh this weather it has turned quite dramatically in the last 20 minutes i've just come around the corner from where i was a little bit sheltered and the wind has really picked up it's really shifting now in some ways that's a good thing though because as i mentioned earlier with the the sort of low clag hanging over the top of the score fells it is actually starting to lift a little bit now which is what i want really because this panoramic doesn't really sorry i just keep looking down at this uh this wind muff trying to keep you sheltered here um, yeah, the panoramic doesn't work quite as well unless you can see the, the top of the mountain. So, fingers crossed, this thing's going to keep shifting and uh, I'll be able to see Scorfell in the distance uh, quite soon. I was looking at the EXIF data of that earlier shot that I took four years ago and it was saying that I shot it at 100mm, which seems quite long. And when I've come up here and I've tried to frame one up at 100mm, it seems a little bit tight. Um, so, I must have. I can only assume I was further back up the hill and zoomed in a bit, but I'm not going to try and go looking for that exact spot. So I've come a little further down from where I probably was and I've got my 50 millimeter uh, prime on. That's going to give me really lovely sharpness across the, the frame. I'm probably going to crop it uh, more like a classic sort of 17, six crop and lose a bit at the top and the bottom. I'm just hoping for this light to pop out and then I can get nice sort of direct light hitting the needle in the foreground but also those really dark brooding skies behind. I've got one of the two at the moment but fingers crossed we'll get the second one. So just to talk you through this panoramic because on reviewing these images in Lightroom it's pretty apparent that I've made a bit of a balls up. Uh, nothing wrong with that, we all make mistakes and I've definitely made one here. Uh, on reviewing this and comparing it with the image that I had in my head from 2016 uh, it's pretty apparent that the perspectives are completely wrong uh, in that original shot I must have been much lower down and further round to the right uh, so in this image here I'm higher up and too far to the left and also my focal length at 50 millimeter is too wide so these individual frames that have been stitched together are actually making the Eskdale needle which is in the lower centre of the frame here look quite small whereas the original image shot at a longer focal length uh, the needle is much more prominent now a little bit of direct light on the needle in this shot would have would have helped a little bit but I still think it would have been a bit too insignificant in the frame and it certainly wouldn't have rescued this shot anyway on the face of it it's a nice enough image you know there's quite a bit going on there's some nice dappled light sort of hitting the mountain on the left hand side we've got some nice moody clouds uh, but that rock face on the right hand side for me is far too dominant it's pulling your eye right out the frame and it's not really of that much interest so you can see why I probably cropped it out in the original image from 2016 it's not a problem because I didn't quite get the light that I needed for this shot on this occasion so I'll tuck this away in the memory bank for next time and hopefully I won't make this mistake again. Oh, the light, the light is absolutely superb. I'm a little concerned about this wall of something coming towards me. It's either gonna be absolutely exceptional or I'm gonna get absolutely drowned. We'll have to see. Every time I come up here, I get some really changeable conditions and tonight again, I mean, really wasn't forecasted this to be honest, but it's a, again, a good, you know, demonstration of the fact that you know just get yourself out of here sometimes because you never know what's gonna happen really wow what a 15 minutes i had shooting these images jesus uh, the light was absolutely superb as soon as i saw this passing squall um coming across in front of me i i, I immediately binned the panoramic and i just started shooting for the light here this first image looking towards slight side is a, a shot i've i've actually uh, attempted many times in the past knowing how the light falls at this time of year as well it creates this almost sort of lunar looking landscape in front of you which is 
absolutely fantastic to witness and that backlit hill storm just passing over there just adds to the mood and the, the drama. It's it's classic Lakeland at its best really this, this shot and one I was really pleased to be able to get. The second image, again I'm really just shooting for the light here, the sort of compositional side of it, it, it does break a few rules in that you know you've got that big rocky outcrop there in the bottom lower centre there um, and also the way the hills overlap each other in the background that's probably a little bit of a no-no but with the light as good as this I mean you can't complain too much. I was a little limited in where I could move left and right so I was kind of stuck with this sort of scene if you like but as a record of an amazing moment with some just truly amazing light uh, yeah really pleased to come away with these two images and I think they'll they'll make a couple of really good prints as well <laughs> wow <laughs> what a five or ten minutes that's been absolutely amazing squall just passed in front of me I think it's hail rather than rain fortunately it was as I say in front of me rather than going over me so I didn't get soaked uh, but we had some fantastic light behind it as well so I was just grabbing the telephoto lens and the 50 millimeter and just see really just shooting towards the light more than anything else I don't know if they're gonna uh, be anything outstanding but it's just great to be up here in conditions like this I mean don't get me wrong I love shooting the lower level stuff and you know pretty chocolate box shots of lakes but uh, no give me this any day this is this is far more up my street uh, it's it's tough to shoot tonight. I mean, you can hear this howling wind behind me, but I mean, it's it's absolutely superb up here. The forecast was actually meant to be a lot more settled than this, so this has been a little bit of a bonus, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> just having to be careful here because of this wind. Um, I don't know if this panoramic image that I had in my mind is actually going to come off tonight. I don't really care, to be honest, because... Uh, I'm having such a good time in these conditions, so we'll just have to see, but we've got about half an hour till sunset, so I mean, the way the weather's going tonight, it could get absolutely anything here, so who knows. Right, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here, I think, because I've just sent the drone up to have a little look out at sea and I don't think the light's going to do what I'm, well, what I need it to anyway for the panoramic shot I had in mind. But that's not a problem because that squall that came past before, the five, ten minutes there, it was absolutely lovely. And even though it was a little bit of a battle to get the shots with the wind, uh, certainly looking on the back of the camera anyway, they look, they look half decent, so it's... It's definitely been worthwhile coming up here this evening. I was just thinking on there, um, this shoot I'm doing tonight is probably going to be the last shoot I actually do with the, the D810 that I use for all my stills. So I am actually in the process of changing over my equipment. Um, I did mention on an earlier vlog back in the end of the summer that I was looking at getting a Z7. Because of the way things have panned out with the pandemic and whatnot, I, I kind of held off a little bit because, uh, you know, I'm, well, basically I'm pretty tight with money and I don't like spending it. Um, but this change has been forced upon me a little bit because in a, another previous vlog, you might remember that my camera was actually fogging up. So I think now's the right time to probably do a change. I will do a video on that at some point and go into a little bit more detail about you know equipment and stuff like that i mean i'm not i think i've mentioned a few times in the past i'm not a i'm not big into the the gear element of photography it's very much about taking pictures for me but you do need the right gear to do the job properly and for me as a, a working professional and printing images the sizes i do in the gallery i really need equipment that's going to do the job for me so yeah look out for a video um maybe in the next couple of weeks discussing the change over to the z7 and, and a mirrorless system but for now i'm going to leave this one i'll stick it out until sunset which is in about 25 minutes so if i do get anything after this point i'll post it up at the end 
A uh, quick thank you to everyone who's ordered the calendar. They're going to be getting shipped next week. So if you've ordered one, um, yeah, next, next week, possibly the week after for some of them, I don't know. But certainly in the next fortnight anyway. Uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one, folks. Cheers for watching.